So what is it really like running 100Ks? I'm in the middle of something here. You tell them about the part where it feels like they may shit themselves? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm getting to it. Or how about the part where um, they also just can't stomach food and feel like they're gonna throw up? Did you mention the cost or like the expense of it? Can you just, it? thank you. I am just saying. All right, just thanks, saying. bye. So with ultra running, there are two sides to it. There's the part that's like super fun and fulfilling and that type two fun when you look back and you reminisce and you're like, holy shit. I just ran a hundred kilometers. That's crazy. And then there's the other part, the uh, during the race. So I ran my first 100 kilometers five months into my running journey. Now, getting into running, how did I even begin? So I ran a half marathon with little to no prep just because I wanted to see if I could do it. Now, what did I do to actually prep for it? To be completely transparent, I spent about eight weeks in the gym just doing interval training, weights, that type of thing. So I had a pretty good baseline level of fitness. And I completed my first half marathon and another marathon like uh, about a month later. I didn't feel great for it because I literally knew not very much about running. I learned everything through trial and error and then eventually connecting with other people in the community and learning through them. So I have made a lot of mistakes in my running journey that have led to injuries, have led me feeling like absolute crap during and after my run. So I'm gonna break down a few key essentials for you so that uh, it doesn't happen to you. Now, the first thing is your baseline level of fitness and your aerobic base. So how do you train up your aerobic base and what is an aerobic base? So basically we have anaerobic and aerobic bases. Anaerobic is something that you see in things like dancers, sprinters. It is that high burst of energy for that short little period of time. Now, anaerobic is essentially endurance. It's like keeping it going for a really long time. And that's just in layman's terms. Now, to build a aerobic base takes consistency. It really doesn't matter how far you run. It's just that you keep running. So the number one thing that I say to anyone who is starting their running journey, run for time and not distance. So what does that mean? Instead of saying, hey, I'm gonna run four kilometers, I'm gonna run five kilometers, six, whatever it is. Generally, when we set ourselves a mileage or a distance that we are going to run, we tend to run it a bit faster because we wanna get it over and done with, we gas ourselves out and then we feel like crap afterwards and it's just not a good time. However, if you say, I'm gonna run for 20 minutes today, then I'm gonna run for 30 minutes today. Running faster does not make the time go faster. So you're forcing yourself to run for that period of time. This is probably one of the easiest and most key ways that you are gonna build your aerobic base. My recommendation, if you're completely new and you're just starting out, run for 20 minutes. And when I say run for 20 minutes, I mean no breaks. Just try to run for the full 20 minutes. Do not go fast. Do not try to overexert yourself. Run at a pace that you can manage and maintain. And that's the key to all of this. It is doing something that you are able to sustain long term. Now, it may be in the second week, then you up it to 30 minutes, then you up it to 40 minutes. And before you know it, you'll be running for an hour. So that is the key thing that I would say if you are just starting your running journey. Now let's get into some of the other things, nutrition and all of the things that come along with that. I had absolutely no clue about nutrition, salt tablets, gels, like I didn't know about any of this stuff when I started. And I was wondering why I always felt like crap post run. The key simple thing is my nutrition. I'm like, well, I'm healthy and I'm eating well, but that's a little bit different. When we run long distances, our body is taking up a lot of nutrients and a lot of different things in our body to keep us going. It means that we're losing a lot. Now, the number one thing that we lose is salt. My biggest game changer has been taking salt tablets. Now I will link everything that I take and that I use in the description below so you can go and have a look at that if you kind of want to know what I take. Now generally with a salt tablet, I lose a lot of salt when I run. Like post run, my face is crystallized. So for a big long run, I will generally take a salt tablet the night before and the morning of. Maybe I'll take a half if it's a shorter distance, etc. Salt basically avoids you from cramping. 
that's like a really key thing. If you're getting cramps while you run it, it's probably because your salt is like really low. So we have salt tablets. Then there's also other things that you can help with cramping like a cramp fix. This is the most uh, vile concoction ever created to man. It is so disgusting. My favorite thing is watching people try it for the first time. You squeeze it in your mouth and it's disgusting. It's like drinking lemon and vinegar mixed together in this weird concoction, but it works. Now, another thing is gels. You have caffeinated and uncaffeinated gels. Now, for something like 100Ks, I basically took, I believe, five gels altogether. Now, caffeinated and uncaffeinated gels, what is the difference aside from the fact that they're caffeinated? Well, here's the thing. Our bodies can only process so much caffeine. So once you hit your threshold and then you start taking caffeinated gels, it's kind of pointless because our body literally can't use it. So it's kind of a waste and also they tend to be more expensive. So it's also just wasting your money. Gels generally contain things like carbs, sugars, and they're this little quick release and boost of energy to keep you going during your run. The next thing that I love is a hydration mix. Now a hydration mix or hydrolyte, uh, essentially just keeps your hydration levels really nice and high. And it also usually has things like sodium in it as well, which really helps. And then for something like 100 kilometers, it is important to eat. Now I know, when you're running that distance, the last thing that you wanna do is eat because genuinely it feels kind of gross. You're also consuming a lot of water. So downing food is kind of hard. So at every aid station, I just had to keep reminding myself to eat, even if I didn't want to. And usually after I eat as well, I either sometimes get stomach cramps or I will literally just have to walk a little bit so I don't feel like I'm about to throw up. But at every aid station, I just made sure that I ate like a little bit of something with carbs, a bit of sugar, and I kept on my way. I don't think it was until I hit like uh, maybe around the 86 kilometer mark that I genuinely felt hungry and I had a slice of pizza. So what are the other important things that you need for running? Well, there's running, there's of course trail shoes. Trail shoes are very different to road shoes. They usually have a lot of extra grip on them if you're going on technical outdoor terrain, which is really important. Then you also have your running vest. I love my running vest. It's awesome. You can store everything that you need in there. You've got the little pockets. You have your water bottles in there. You also have a bladder, so you have easy access to water at all times. Some people, when they're doing a shorter distance, they prefer just to use a running belt, which honestly is a really great idea. Idea. If you're going on a race that has aid stations and you know that you can refuel and rehydrate really easily, just take a running belt if that's what you prefer. So now let's actually get into what does it feel like to run 100 kilometers? So I ran my first 100Ks last February in New Zealand at the Terawera Ultra Trail Series. It was about 100 kilometers with, I believe, around 2000 meters elevation gain. So in terms of elevation gain, it was actually kind of low. It wasn't super hilly. There are, of course, some aggressive inclines, but nothing compared to a lot of other runs and races. So if you're just starting out, honestly, a great race to do it at. I feel like the start line always gets you so hyped up, like the energy of everyone there, everyone is so excited and so happy to be there. It is honestly, truly contagious. And then it's that weird thing at the start line because you know that you have so far to go, so you don't wanna go super fast out of the gate, but also at the same time, you don't wanna get bottlenecked. So it's deciding how fast you're gonna go at the beginning of the race. For me, I didn't go full out, but I went at a, definitely a faster pace than I will continue on for the rest of the race, just so I don't get stuck. Honestly, I would say I didn't feel any sort of niggles or like pain up until the 50 kilometer mark. That's when I kind of entered the pain cave and never really left. And running on trail and running such a big distance, time just works in a different way. I feel like time just moves really quickly and you can look down at your watch and you're like, oh wow, I've been running for literally five hours and I just haven't felt it at all. And I honestly do wanna say, I do think it's really a mental thing too. I know that when I go out on a run, if mentally I know that I'm doing, say, a 40 kilometer run, I will be really fine up until sort of the half marathon mark, and then maybe I'll start to get tired. But similarly, if I say I'm gonna go out and run a half marathon at 21 kilometers, I'm probably gonna get a little bit tired at 10, 11, 12 kilometers. I don't know what it is, but I think mentally when you have a distance in mind, your brain already knows that it's gonna go for that distance. 
and I find that I usually get tired halfway through at whatever distance that is. So around the 50 kilometer mark, I definitely started to feel some fatigue, a little bit of tiredness, which totally normal and like what you would expect. And then it was my knees and my hip flexors that started to play up around the 70, 75 kilometer mark. So my hip flexors had been kind of tight and it is something that I do struggle with on long runs is my hip flexors get really, really tight. Um, and the only way to release them is basically to like dig your thumbs in or get a medicine ball and just like lie on. And then of course my knees were in a bit of pain. You're going up and downhill, up and downhill. So yeah, your knees are taking a hell of a lot of impact. I remember getting to 75 and there was a really good medic there and I was like, hey, help my knees. They really hurt, please help me. So I sat down, he taped up my knees in a really great way. I don't remember specifically how he did it, but he did one across here, one below. And that seemed to just keep everything in place and kind of got me through the rest of the race. It just made those declines a lot easier on the body. Because that's the thing, when you're running long distance, everyone thinks that going uphill is the most painful thing. But realistically, I think it's going downhill that hurts the most. I think it was around 75, again, that my hip flexors were just in a lot of pain. And I did end up walking for a little while until eventually they just released and I was able to run for 10 kilometers in a really nice flow state to the second last aid station at like 86, I think. And here is where I made a mistake. I sat down. I sat down, I ate something, and I got back up. Now, when you sit, everything contracts. So my hips, my hip flexor, which was already like super tight and spasmy, had just released. I sat down and it just clenched back up again. So I got up, again, they were just seizing up. Now, anyone who has never had any hip flexor pain at all, basically your hip flexor, when it tightens up, it's really hard to move your legs up. So it's hard enough to walk, let alone run. So there were definitely periods where I tried to run and my body just physically would not let me run. It's extremely painful and you can kind of train for it, but some people are just way more predisposed to having issues with their hip flexors than other people. I personally have always had really tight hips and it's something that I'm working on. And honestly, climbing has been helping a lot with that, but it's definitely something that I just have to work through. Then finally reaching that finish line, and weirdly enough, I didn't really feel any excitement or anything. I was just so tired, so done, so dead. And I just wanted to sleep. I just wanted to not move. I wanted to lie down and that's it. I did, I think a lot of people are really surprised when I say that I never even got a single blister during my run. They're just like, how did you manage that? And on some runs that I go on, like my feet are covered in blisters. I'm literally like cutting off the dead skin. But I think on this particular run, I didn't have any because I was wearing really thin compression socks and then my wool socks over the top with my trail shoes that were half a size bigger, which allowed my feet to basically expand and kind of move around. I also put foot balm on my feet beforehand to avoid blisters. And then I basically just lathered my body in chafe balm. Now, while I didn't get any blisters, I got a hell of a lot of chafing. Oh my Lord. So I was wearing a sports bra, you know, uh, tights, like shorts, a top, standard, whatever. So when I was taking everything off, there was like a chafe line on the top of where my shorts went up to. Not very like hectic, but still very noticeable. And then also on the straps of my sports bra. And it's not that they're like too small or uncomfortable or tight in any way. It's literally just that I have been wearing them for hours and hours on end, sweating and running. Yeah, the chafing honestly hurt a lot. Stepping into a shower where it's just like, I don't want to shower right now, but I need to because I literally smell like a garbage can. And then having that water hit all of your fresh open skin is um, incredibly painful. <laughs> so, and then it comes to sleepy time and sleepy time is usually just a hell of a lot of cold sweats uh, and waking up in a pool of your own sweat. Um, it kind of sucks. It's never really fun for anyone. And then the next day it's being able to try and just stomach a meal, which sounds really weird because realistically you have burned thousands upon thousands and thousands of calories. There is a reason why they weigh athletes before and after a race to make sure that they haven't lost too much weight during the run. But essentially I think it took me the next day, 
kind of like the entire day to just eat a single pizza. Now, physically, did I have any injuries like long term? No, my hips released, they were fine after a few days. The one really painful thing that lingered for a few days was my knees. So being able to bend my knees properly definitely hurt for a few days. And I have always had super crackly bones. Anytime that I move anything, it's just like crack, 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 crack. And so every time that I would bend and my knees would just naturally snap, um, it basically felt like my kneecaps were breaking, which was incredibly uncomfortable. I think that went away after about like a week, but yeah, not super, super fun. But then after like a week, it's all said and done. It's again, you go into that type two fun. You reminisce about the run and you talk about it and you can chat about it with your friends and you remember it in such a fond light, even all of the good and the bad. I think I went for my first shakeout run maybe a week after, which kind of hurt a little bit. And then after like a week and a half to two weeks, I was fine and back to normal and back to running again. I would say it's definitely a really intimidating distance to do. And most people would probably just start with the 50K. Um, <laughs> I think for me at that point, I had already run two marathons and I figured, well, I knew in my mind that I could run a 50. Like that wasn't a question for me, but running a hundred now, that was a pretty big jump and I wanted something to challenge myself. So if you think about running an ultra, um, it is probably gonna be painful. You're probably gonna be quite grumpy in certain parts. You're gonna be in a lot of pain. It's definitely gonna be a mental game. Um, there are so many points where you probably just don't wanna complete it and that's totally fine and normal to go through but it is also a really epic achievement and I guarantee you'll probably catch the bug to just go and keep doing more and more and more and more. 